Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I'm going to be talking about my best books of 2023. So, 2023 was an interesting year of reading for me. I read 79 books, so pretty decent for the most part. Not the most I've ever read, but not the least I've ever read either. So, I'll take it. I have about 11 books on my best of list and so I just wanted to take a moment and tell you about them and tell you why I think they were the best of my year. These are in no particular order and some of these are actually like best of slash most surprising as well. The first book I have on this list is Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. So last year I was working on reading the entirety of Throne of Glass and um, starting the series, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, but it wasn't until I got to, like, the middle, like, four-ish books that I started really, like, enjoying what I was reading, and I think out of all of them, Empire of Storms was the best one for me because I felt like it had a little bit of everything that I usually like, so I had action, I had romance, it, it felt like a pinnacle moment of Sarah J Maas like getting all her characters together, setting them out finally on the big bad quest, like the biggest quest they've all they all have to conquer. Whereas like the previous books they were all doing their own little quests first just to come together and work towards that. And it was just it was just amazing. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because it is like a middle book in the series and I don't want to spoil it just in case nobody's read it but I just really enjoyed it I thought the character development was really good I loved the fact that there was just so much um, tension and by the time you were finished with the book you're like well what are they gonna do now because it's kind of feeling like they're stuck and they're out of luck so I just loved that moment so then the next book I have is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater so I really enjoyed this Regency era fantasy. It follows a girl whose mother died and before her mother died, I guess to save her, she promised an elf, I think it was an elf, that she he could take her soul. And so when he comes, he comes to her as a little girl and tries to take it. But she gets saved by her cousin and so the elf only manages to take half her soul. So ever since that day, she's only felt like a muted sense of emotion. Like she's never really felt strong, strong emotions. If she has any, it's so muted that it's inconsequential. So she's lived her life in this state of just like gray, where she just doesn't feel anything too strongly. Just she doesn't have like she doesn't have like strong urges or anything like that. It's just meh. When you get to the present, her and her cousin are now at the age to be presented into society. And so she realizes that she's very harmful to her cousin's chances of marriage. Like, she doesn't really care about herself, but she loves her cousin. And so she asks a magician that they become acquainted with to help her fix her problem. And from there, it's also a love story between her and the magician. I really loved this story. I thought it was super sweet and I loved the loyalty between her and her cousin. Like I don't think her cousin ever doubted her for one minute even when her her cousin's mother was like so terrible to her. Her cousin was always there to stand up for her and I really loved that because it was just such a genuine sense of love and loyalty between them. And then um, I really enjoyed her her bond with the magician and I I've seen some reviews say people were like he's so abusive blah 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 and maybe he was and maybe I'm just like in my head I read it differently and that's okay but I liked the fact that he was so grumpy in the beginning because he was so distrustful of others and then he literally started warming up to her once he realized that she was just not gonna run she wasn't scared of him she really wasn't scared of how he talks to people or the gruff exterior that he used to kind of like make people get away from him. So the next book I have on this list is Happy Place by my girl Emily Henry. This was, there's no way this wasn't going to be on my list because I love Emily Henry. And so far I've really enjoyed all of her books. And if there ever comes a, ever comes a day where I don't enjoy a book by her, it'll be a sad day. 
very sad. From what I remember, Happy Place is about this group of friends that used to get together almost like every summer. And then it's, I think it's been a bit because everybody's been busy. So they find out that the place that they used to get together at, this like, I think it's like a lake house. Um, the girl whose father owns it is selling it. And so they all decide to come back together one last time and just like celebrate all the memories they have there. But what they don't realize is that they're each coming with their own secrets of life and craziness. Two main characters were really focused on, they used to be a couple, they were in this friend group, they met through this friend group, they got together, and they broke up. And they haven't told anybody why they broke up or that they even broke up. And so when they come to the place, they have to pretend to still be together in order not to ruin, because they don't want to ruin the mood, because it's about celebrating memories and all that kind of stuff, and two of their friends are getting married. So, through this journey of like reminiscing I guess they start to realize that um maybe there is a solution to the issues that they were having and maybe they just need to start fresh if that makes sense and that it's okay to grow and change your relationships with your friends and partners and everything like that like that's just how life's meant to be so I just really enjoyed this book overall I liked the friendships I liked seeing how they kind of had to break down those friendships and rebuild them into something new to shape where they were in their lives I just I just enjoyed it overall and I'm super excited for the new book that's coming out this year as well okay, next book I have on this list is actually a surprise it was one of my su most surprising reads of the year and that is seven husbands of evelyn hugo i had been hearing so many people talk about this book for years literally so i finally picked it up to read it because i was like i need to that was when i was needing to start unhauling some books and it was one of my oldest book of the month books on my shelf and so i was like well i need to read this to figure out if i want it blah 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 and i read it and i really enjoyed it i enjoyed it more than i thought i was going to and I'm kind of glad I read it after its popularity kind of fizzled down because I feel like it gave me um, a good like chance to pace myself and just really enjoy what I was reading at the at a slower pace. And yeah, I really enjoyed Evelyn. I thought a lot of though she was like selfish a lot of the time and some of the decisions she made like ended up coming back to bite her in the butt i enjoyed the fact that she owned up to them and she never regretted them if that makes sense like she she acknowledged she was like yeah this was a terrible decision i was selfish but she was like at the same time i don't regret it because it got to me to where i wanted to be which was famous and so i really enjoyed that that was her outlook like she was just like yeah it was a shitty decision and i probably shouldn't have made it but I don't regret it because in the, at the end of the day, she's like, it got everybody where they needed to go. And nobody had to give up on their dreams, essentially. And yeah, I just love that so much. <laughs> so I am a big Evelyn Hugo fan now. And once that movie comes out, I'm, I'm so about it. I'm going to be in that theater. All right, so next I have Shadow Crown by Melissa Bear. This is the sequel to uh, Broken Blade. And this is a sequel, so I'm not going to talk too much about it, but I just enjoyed it. I like Melissa Blair's writing in this series. I really enjoyed the characters in the series. And I enjoyed the romance. And I think it's just fun and action-packed, and I think it has a little bit of everything. And you should check it out if you haven't already, because the third book comes out in February, and I'm so excited. Next, I have Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. If you haven't heard about Fourth Wing or the hype behind Fourth Wing... I don't know, tell you. I thought this book, like, was it the best written book ever? No. But I had fun. <laughs> it had some fun times. It was fun vibes. So I really enjoyed it overall. I really liked the dragons aspect of the story. And I liked the military academy theme idea they had going on. So it follows this girl who is forced to join this military academy. Um, within her world and she basically has to survive like at any point in her time during this academy she could just die by the hands of a dragon by the hands of a mission or by the hands of her fellow cadets and so she basically just has to be on guard at all times and hope for the best 
and from there she kind of goes on this adventure of just discovering herself she realizes that she's actually a lot stronger than she realized and turns out that she has a bigger path in fate than she realized that she did i guess Next, I have A Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. So, I thought this story was very cozy, it was very sweet, it was very cute. It gave me House in the Cerulean Sea vibes, but like, obviously different storyline and characters and all that kind of stuff. But it's like the same feeling, where like you have this lady, she has to um, come and teach these three little girls how to be witches without getting caught by the other witches, because she's worried about what they would do. And so from there, she really bonds with them. She really shows them how to embrace their magic and how to not be ashamed of who they are. And I just loved, loved this book so much. I'm really looking forward to reading another, any other stories by this author. And I just got this very strong boost of serotonin as I read it. So it was just so, so cute. Next, I have The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. So I really enjoyed this book. It follows a girl who lives in a kingdom, African style kingdom, where if you are born with golden blood, you are considered to be a demon and you are sent off to um, join the king's army of girls with similar blood. And that's what happens to our main character. She has been raised in this village and then one day it's discovered that she has golden blood. After a traumatic experience, and she is made to join the army. And from there, she starts to try and find out like who she really is, why is she so different from the other girls with golden blood, and why does it feel like the things that they're telling them aren't true. Alright, almost done. So the, la the next book I have is The Diviners by Libra Bray. This book really shocked me. It's been on my own TBR for a really long time, so I wasn't really sure how I was going to feel about it, especially with the whole it taking place in the 1920s and all that kind of stuff, and I actually really enjoyed it. It was really creepy. It was very atmospheric, and I think that's what kept drawing me in, was just like how, like scary it kind of was but at the same time you really wanted to know what was going on and why things were taking place and all this kind of stuff and I just loved it so much so it follows this girl named Evie who has the ability to see the past of object objects that she touches so one day while she's at a party she decides to do a party trick and show off her skill and she creeps everybody out and it's basically reaches her parents and her parents ship her off to her uncles in New York um, to help let things die down. So while she's in New York with her uncle, she realizes that he actually has this strong fascination with the occult or things that are not of this world and she gets roped into helping him with this murder case that takes place. And then she starts to realize that there are bigger things at play and maybe her ability has been given to her for a specific reason. But as you're following her story, you also get the other perspectives of other kids like her who also have specific special abilities. And so you're kind of seeing the beginnings of something come together in this first book. And then as you get through the rest of the series, it, it plays out as it should. Um, so I really liked this. I, again, I liked the creepy atmosphere. I liked the fact that you're getting these perspectives of all these kids and you know eventually they're gonna come together, you just don't know when. So you're trying to figure out how all of this adds up and what this is gonna lead to ultimately. And I just think it was a really good series for the most part and that I probably should have read it sooner. <laughs> but that's okay. And then the last book I have on this list is The Inheritance of Ocridia Divina. Um, this one I gave, I think I gave it four stars when I read it, but I really loved this story. It gave me the similar vibes as The Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Morena Garcia. The vibes that I had reading that book were the same vibes that I got reading this book. And I just think it was so interesting and I loved the magical realism aspects because I think it really enhanced the story a lot. Um, you follow this lady named Orkidia and you so you start to learn her about her past 
and then you're also getting her present. So when you start the story, she's already an old lady, and she's like had like kids, and her kids have had kids, and so her family is always coming together for one reason or another. And then suddenly they all like stop coming because of various reasons and life things until she calls them back and turns out she turns into a tree. So her three youngest grandchildren decide to kind of try to figure out what's happening and they start to realize that their family is cursed and it has something to do with her turning into this tree. And so you, they kind of have to work together to figure out her past, which you're getting to. So you're getting chapters of the present and the chapters of her past from her perspective. Um, leading up to the events of the present, I guess. And so you're kind of trying to piece together how things came about as they're piecing it together how things came about. And how she got to this point of this tree. <laughs> So it's actually really interesting and I really love the characters and just the dynamic of like seeing how her past actions have influenced the present generation of her family and how they've been impacted by it as well and it's just a really good I feel like commentary or like concept of like generational lines being so connected. But yeah, so these are the topics that I loved in 2023. I thought they were so good. I'm glad I read them. They brought me a lot of joy. And I'm looking forward to seeing what 2024 brings for me as well. So if you liked this video, please like it down below. Let me know in the comments some of your favorites of 2023 that you read. If you're not good at commenting, go ahead and leave me an emoji. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button. You all some flowers and wonderful things.